you'll get an even bigger blessing. The people love us. They love to sing with us all the old hymns, and it is just a joy. Come and do it. FOP family, my name is Holly Young, and I am reaching out to you on behalf of our ministry at Father's Kitchen. Please come help service on the second Tuesday and the fifth Thursday of every month. Um, meet at 5.30 and help us serve the community and uh, fellowship with our fellow members. Come join us. God bless you guys. Hey everybody, we're glad you're here with us today to worship together at FOP. I'm Pastor Matt and this is Bobby. And we're so happy you're joining with us today. If this is your first time and you're visiting with us, we would love for you to fill out a visitor card. It's in the back of the seat right in front of you. Make sure you take it to the Welcome Center because they have a gift for you. We are going to have a great day in the Lord. God bless you. And if you're joining us online for the first time this morning, we want to connect with you also. You can go to fopchurch.net slash infoform so that we can connect with you and be praying for you. You can always give your tithes and offerings at any of the giving stations around the sanctuary, or you can give with our app, by text, or online. And if you've got any questions about giving, visit our Welcome Center. We'd love to help you out. I would love to encourage you to take our FOP Connect course. We offer it the second, fourth Sunday of every month at 9.45 a.m. This course is designed for you to get to know us a little bit better about our mission, the vision, our history, and we also get an opportunity to know you better. If you would like to take it online, you can go to fopchurch.net slash FOP Connect. We hope you join us. We have so much going on here at FOP Church, and we don't want you to miss out on any of it. For more information on upcoming events, grab a bulletin on your way in or out of service on Sunday mornings. You can check our screens in service or in the lobby. We also have posters posted throughout the church for event information. You can also go onto our mobile app under the Connect tab, and we've got all the events and sign-up forms on there for you. For any help, stop by the Welcome Center, and we would be happy to help you. We want to invite you to stand, but before we get started, here are a few of our most important events that we want you to mark on your calendar.
When the music fades And all is stripped away And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's worth That will bless your heart
racing at the speed of light and in his kingdom every day and thing is bound to rise oh god our redeemer he is faithful to revive oh he will revive yeah show
Cause the spirit was moving over the waters. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the spirit was moving over the waters. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down, spirit, when you move.
glad to have you here this Sunday morning and you online. We're so glad you're here with us. Hey, God is good, isn't he? God so loved us that he gave his son. Amen. Are you thankful? One week after Easter, we are thankful that he rolled the stone away. Hey, I want to ask all of the parents, the parents of the children that are going to be dedicated, and you guys just get ready to clap because we've got a bunch of kids, what I saw. And if you're here and you didn't sign up, just come on up anyway. That's me. I don't sign up. I just show up. All right. Yeah. That's... I'm not good with all that online stuff anyway. I still use a legal pad. How many old people in here do we have? Come on, come on, come on. Look at these beautiful babies. Oh, oh my. That's trouble right there in Savannah. Beautiful girls. And I know there's a lot of family members out there with these. Beautiful children. I think this church has more twins in it per capita. These beautiful girls right here. There are so many twins. If you're a twin out there, lift your hand. Come on, lift your hand. Lift your hand. You're a twin out there. You're a twin. Right, look at this. All these twins. Man, that baby's ears going to pop. His ears, when you get it up that high, his ears start pop. Be careful. Be... All right, look at all of this. Jill and Alex, look. You got your work cut out for you, don't you? That's a lot of beauty up here, isn't it? Come on, give them a hand. We got, we got baby's first Bible. If it, it, knowing you parents, some of you probably already have the baby Bible, but uh, we got a ba Bible for each baby, and we are just so thankful. You guys snuck in on the back side. I didn't see you come by. So we're so thankful for each one of you, and I know you guys. The Bible said, I'm just going to read. Bobby, come on out here with me. She's trying to hide. Y'all see that? She's trying to hide. Psalms 127. might need to hold my glasses. I don't know. Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain to build it. Except the Lord keeps the city. The watchman waketh but in vain. The message says it like this. If God doesn't build your house, listen, you might as well keep sleeping. There's no protection. You might as well keep sleeping. And then it says in verse 3, children are a heritage of the Lord and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hands of a mighty man, so are children of your youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Back to the message, verse 5. The enemy doesn't have a chance. The, the enemy doesn't have, you guys, Get this in your spirit today with your children. The enemy doesn't have a chance. You will sweep them off your doorstep. Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy 1, 12 says, For I know in whom I have believed, and I believe that he is able to keep that which I commit unto him against that day. A baby dedication is not baby salvation. Uh, there's coming a, an opportunity for that child to make his decision, her decision. But what we are saying is just like Job. You know, when, when Satan came against Job, he said, I can't penetrate Job's family because there's a hedge about them. And what we are doing, we're saying, God, we dedicate this to you. God, I give this. Like Anna in the temple said, God, if you give me a baby, I'll give it to you. That's what we're, we're doing, reciprocating. And we're saying, God, what you've given us, we now give you. And in light of all the blessing that you have given us, we pray your blessing over this child. Amen. So I know this, is, this church has got a lot of rednecks in it. How many bow hunters do we have out there? Come on. Bow, Ellie, some, some of you girls too now. Uh, so when you shoot a bow and arrow, I love shooting bow and arrow, but you shoot a bow and arrow, 
you know, you pull that string back and you pull it towards your heart, towards your chest. And that arrow that's straight, if it's not straight, you'll know soon enough. Actually, in the, the Bible, the word sin is missing the mark. It's, it, it has to do with archery, like I've missed the mark. So as you pull it back to your chest, you pick a target. And this morning, these families have picked a target. They're saying, this child is going to be in heaven with me someday. But while on, on earth, this child is going to do something great for God. And so you have picked a mark, and then you release it. And every archer knows it goes further than you do. Every child on this stage, this is our plan, our, our predetermined plan, that they will go further than we do. They will go where only we can see, but they will actually go there. Amen. <laughs> we got some preachers up here. I mean, they're just preaching right along with me. That was long. That was like bagpipes. How much? Uh, I mean, this is like 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Man. So we're thankful for our children. Come on out here. You guys, listen, anybody, we, we ask you, we got a lot of kids in this church. As you can see, these are just the ones that made it. We need volunteers. Do we not? Jill, Alex, do we not? Uh and Jill has been in children's ministry. We're having a lot of just transition there. Jill's been in trans How many years have you been in the children's ministry? Eight. Eight. That's amazing. That's one quarter of her life. She's only 28. That's one quarter of your whole life. You were, you, thank you for that dedication. And we thank you. Anybody that can just say, I can do one Sunday. Uh, a month. I mean, one Sunday every two months. We'll take that too. One cent. Anybody got one Sunday every three months? Come on, we'll take that too. All right. So we're gonna pray over these children right now. Let's. Okay. Bobby says we're starting over here. I'll follow her. Okay. All right. We're gonna start. You girls, come on over. What are you gonna do? Oh, you're gonna start there. We're gonna meet. I'll get this together. I've been here 25 years. The next 25, I'm gonna do better. Okay. Let's start. Let's pray. You guys lift your hands towards these children. Father, we just thank you for this family. <laughs> we thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful children. Leo. God bless Leo the lion, Lord God. Mighty, mighty Jackson, Lord God. We just pray, Harrison. We pray, Lord God, over these beautiful babies. God, we thank you, Lord God, for our children. We thank you. I pray over these parents, Savannah. We pray, Lord, what beauty, Lord. Evie, God bless her. Bless these girls, Lord God. Keep them close to your heart, Lord God, your protection. Jeremy, Barbie, Lord, there's times where these parents will not be where these children are. But your angels, your purpose will never leave them. Even in our absence, Lord God, you will be strong, Lord God steps of a good man beautiful little girl Lord Jesus are ordered of the Lord Lord we thank you for our children we thank you Lord God for these parents Lord God Ashley bless them Jessica Lord we thank you Jesus we thank you Jesus Derek I'm so proud of you buddy bless them Lord God bless them beautiful little boy God Help him, Lord Jesus. Keep him from evil. Keep him from wrong. Keep her, Lord God. Protect her. Well, you look just like your sister that came before you. She, like roll back time. We thank you, Lord God, for this family. Mitch, bless them, Lord God. Bless them. moms and dads. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Bless them. Thank you, Jesus. Those bright eyes. We got beautiful babies up here. God, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these little miracles, Lord God. We thank you. Look, he's strong already. He'll probably get a tattoo by next year, won't he? Father, in the name of Jesus. Uh, guys, there's kids up here that have, that, that have been absolute miracles. We don't even have time to tell the stories. But this is one of them right here, this little bow tie. 
absolute miracles of God. And we are thankful, Lord. We are thankful. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You guys can be seated. Give them a hand as they go down. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh. Last Sunday, we had five services over the Easter weekend, and uh, I mean, over 1,500 people. God just really blessed, did great things. And I thank you for being here. I know it almost feels like the Sunday after Easter, everybody kind of takes a break. And maybe you need a break, you know, but we've got a beautiful day outside and God's presence is on the inside. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to let you go. And uh, why don't you just bring that to me? I was looking for my glasses and phone earlier. And praise the Lord, they were right here. So find things in the house of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, so I want to share a story after a story, uh, still on the Easter message because it's such a powerful message of resurrection. But I want us to look in Mark chapter 14, verse 50. Are you guys all right? Look at your neighbor. Say, are you all right? Are y'all hot? Somebody please say yes. Are y'all hot? You're, you're thinking the other way. Yeah, like my wife, she's hot. No, I'm going to pay for that later. She'll be mad. Are y'all hot? Because I'm burning up. So y'all, okay. So I'm giving y'all permission because you're giving me permission, right? It's hot in here. But uh, it, somebody said in the first service it was really cold. So um, online, <laughs> I know you're wherever you want to be, but we're thankful you're with us. Mark 14, Mark is a powerful book in the gospel. I have a brother named John Mark. My name is Matthew. I have a brother named Luke. What's that tell you? My parents love the gospel. But uh, Mark, of all the gospels, is the shortest, most concise, but it's, it's, very, it's, it's, it's like an action movie. It's just fast, one thing behind the next. In fact, I love reading Mark because Mark gets right to the point. I mean, he gets... He, he, he talks about Jesus on the cross, I think, in nine verses. I mean, but it, he doesn't leave things out either. And this morning I'm going to share something with you that nobody else records, just to say he doesn't leave things out. And then you may think, well, what happened to the editor when he was writing this? Um, in fact, somebody this morning said, I, I've never seen that or I've never noticed that before. But Mark is actually genius. I mean, he will circle back, and you don't know when it's going to happen, but like a good plot twist, he will circle back. And I'm going to show you something this morning, and the title of this message is Exposed. And I didn't spell it wrong. Uh, exposed. Okay. So we're back at Mark 14. In Mark 14, Jesus is right before the cross, right before the soldiers take him, right before, you know, Peter cuts off an ear, they're in the garden, then all of a sudden it goes down. And soldiers come, they take Jesus, it goes down. And the Bible said what happened in that time. Now, like I said, Mark is action-packed. Over 40 times, Mark says, and immediately, immediately. Over 40 times. That lets you know how fast it rolls. So in Mark 14, verse 50, it says, and all, they all forsook him and fled. He's talking about the disciples. They all took off. And there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young men laid hold on him and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. This all happened. This all happened. You might have never seen that in the Bible before. It's enigmatic. It's bizarre. It's, it's, it's just a weird story. It's like, where did Mark just pull that out of the sky? But what he's saying is when this whole thing went down, you know, the ear off, putting the ear on, the soldiers grabbed him, the, the disciples fled. One man was grabbed by his linen garment, and literally it was raked off of him, and he took off naked through the garden. 
it, it, it has to do with shame and embarrassment. Has anybody ever been embarrassed? Everybody. Has anybody ever done something you're ashamed of? You don't want anybody to know. This is a good Sunday, okay? Anybody, lift your hand. Have you ever done something you're ashamed of, okay? Now just look at your neighbor. Tell them what it was. No, I'm <laughs> It's not that church. We're not that church. Okay, so, um, so let's just look over in 1 John real fast. This is, going to, this is going to be like Mark. This is going to be like Mark would preach this sermon. It's not going to be long, okay? He would preach it fast, but it would, it would be powerful. So John chapter 1, 1 John 1, 1 John 1, verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Uh, a little theology, the word cleanseth there is uh, present active indicative. It actually means he cleansed us from sin. When you confess your sin, you are cleansed of sin. He is cleansing us of sin, and he will cleanse us of sin. Amen. It cleanses us from all sin. Verse 8, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive give us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we are cleansed, we are purified, we are redeemed, we are exonerated, Sin is removed. It, it is gone. We are justified. Amen. I've told you before, justified means just if I'd never done it. We are justified. Uh, forgiveness, sometimes forgiveness, you're forgiven. Forgiven is a good thing. Justified is a better thing. What do you mean? You know, you can, you can be forgiven of something, but that person still has that. It's like a debt. You can be forgiven of something, and even then it can seem a little negative. Like, okay, forgive me. And they forgive, but of course, like us, they don't forget. So forgiveness can always seem just a little negative, uh, that you're forgiven, but it's still remembered. But being justified is not saying you're forgiven, you can go. Being justified says, you're forgiven, you can come. Amen. I've been justified. I've been justified as if it never happened. And so I'm going to look at 1 John chapter 2 just a little bit further down. He said, my little children, these things write unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, that's an understatement in the Bible. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous and he is the propitiation, another theology word, big word there, atoning sacrifice, uh, substitution through, sac uh, through sa satisfaction through substitution. He, he satisfied the righteous demands of a just God. Propitiation. Actually, the easiest way to say propitiation is atonement or covering, that I'm covered. Look at your neighbor. If you've, if you've confessed Jesus as Lord, ask him to forgive your sin, and you can say this. Just look at them and say, I'm covered. Bumper to bumper. <laughs> I've got coverage. Okay. Propitiation. He is the covering for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Father, bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. I had my notes, I wrote, wrote it out, and then I wrote it different, and I, I, I spelled it wrong. I just wrote it this way because I liked it. Some of you, a uh, little Greek lesson real fast. X in Greek is the word chi, which you can almost pronounce. It, it means Christ. So uh, the word X, it's word, you know, and oftentimes when I, if you were to look at my notes and me trying to take shortcuts. If I'm talking about Jesus, I usually just do an X. And some people say, I don't like that. No, that was before your English. And, and that means Christ. It, it carries the embodiment of who Christ is. So when you're exposed, when you're put in a vulnerable place, when you're, when you're exposed, we want to be exposed by Christ. Because when we're exposed by Christ, we are atoned. We are 
covered. Frederick the Great, the king of Prussia, uh, one time was visiting prison, and as he was going through it and surveying the prison, looking at all the prisoners started running up to the bars, and they were, they were taking their cups, they were making noise, and they were all saying, I'm innocent, I'm innocent. They got the wrong person. Everyone was trying to, to, to say their, you know, admission of like, they were wrong, I'm right, let me out, let me out. And as he walked all the way through, as he's about to leave, Frederick the Great saw one prisoner sitting at the back behind everyone else with his head down, and it just intrigued him, so he, he, he had him come to the front, and he said to him, I guess you're innocent also. He said, no, king, I am guilty. I deserve what I get. And, and, and Frederick the Great said, release him immediately. Do not let this scoundrel corrupt all of these innocent people. He was released. And it's funny, in the economy of God, what you expose, God will cover. But what you cover, God will expose. Exposing to God is through repentance. And um, Martin Luther, the 1500s reformer, said that it should be a lifestyle for the Christian. Of course, there's the initial getting saved, born again, asking God to forgive you of your sin. Maybe some of you did that last week at Easter. I believe many people were saved last week at Easter. But it can feel kind of like a chocolate bunny. Anybody get a chocolate bunny? And you break into it? You're wondering why it's so light? And you find out the whole center is empty? You know, it's like, what's next? What do I do next? So salvation is God's initial will for your life, but it's not God's will for your life. Pastor Matt said it's not God's will. It is the initial will for your life. But if it were the the entirety of God's will for your life, if I were God, when you got saved, you'd be dead. Because we're not going to mess this up no more. That's it. Lord, forgive me. You know? But he has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. He has a life for you to live as a Christian. And you are reaching other Christians through your life. So repentance, we come to a place where we repent. We say, God, forgive me. God, I've missed the mark. Now, you might not have fallen. You might have sinned. The Bible said if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But you might not be a sinner. And, and what I mean by that is you haven't lost your salvation. I know that's a slippery slope, especially for Pentecostals. But you, it, you can fail and not totally lose your salvation. Now, I do believe you can lose your salvation. We had a long talk, and I'm not going to scratch that scab with anybody but we had a long talk about that once saved, always saved the other day in a men's group. And I thought it was very enlightening because I got to hear where people thought where, and how they derived their thoughts. But every thought should, should come from Scripture. And, and the Scripture, you know, we, we want to stay under the saving grace of God. And I'm not saying you can't backslide, but I'm just saying that God has a Ways and Means Committee. And just like these parents that dedicated their children, these children will be saved. Are they going to fail? Absolutely. Are they going to miss the mark? Yeah. I'm sorry, but they are. But so did you. And and you're either back or or you're on your way back. We're believing that you're totally going to be back. Amen. And that God is going to finish the work that he started in your life. So back at Mark... And the awkward naked person running through the garden, I believe, is a disciple. I believe it it was just the disciples that were with Jesus in the garden. And most commentators, most theologians believe that disciple was Mark, the writer. Now, I believe, this is my own personal belief, the Bible doesn't say this, but I believe it was Mark sliding that in as almost an admission of I failed really bad. I ran. 
He said they all ran. That's what he said, first of all. Then he said he's a follower. Which meant that's what the disciples were. They were followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you come after me, if you follow me, you've got to take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. Follow me. So he's asking them to lay down everything, to follow him. And that's what they think they have done until the irony, the twist, is that when it gets rough when it gets tough, when temptation comes, when it's time, the wicked flee when no man pursues. When, when it's time, they run. The scripture says he even ran right out of his clothes to get away. So when he came to Jesus, he left everything. When he ran from Jesus, he lost everything. You see the irony? It's a linen garment. He leaves it and he's running. And I think of people, and I really believe by the end of this service, somebody's going to get delivered from something. I mean, I really feel this in, in my spirit right now. And somebody's going to be delivered of something. It doesn't mean you're not saved, by the way. It doesn't mean you're not saved. It doesn't mean you won't be in heaven. It just means you're living in hell right here on earth. And somebody's going to be delivered from shame. Humiliation. The embarrassment was something, listen, I, I started this last week. I, it might have been on Good Friday, and I never got to circle back to my notes. But guilt and shame are two different things. Guilt is legal. And you go, go into a courtroom, and I've been in the courtroom with many of you, and some have been with me, but you go into a courtroom, and the, the gavel drops, and he says, guilty. You're guilty. It's a legal term, guilty. When we do wrong, and we've done wrong, we were guilty. Okay, It took the blood of Jesus. It took him to cleanse us, to set us free so that we could be exonerated, so that we could be justified, never done it, right? But we were guilty. We were guilty until we were not because, because he became sin who knew no sin that I might become the righteousness of God. Substitution, transference. He took my pain, my penalty, my punishment. I became free. I became liberated. I became whole. And so we were guilty. Guilt says guilt. Guilt says you're guilty. Legally, you're guilty. Guilt says I've done bad. It's good to have a, a good conscience. I don't like feeling bad. Yeah, but that's good. That's good. It's like the dashboard of your car that the warning lights are saying, fix this. Fix this. So it's good to have a, a convicting conscience, an, an internal witness. A witness on the inside says, whoa, stop. This isn't right. Back up. Back up. Do this right. So it's good to have that. But guilt, guilt is legal, and guilt says, hey, you've done wrong. Shame, shame says, guilt says, I've done something bad. Shame says, I am something bad. Shame becomes a part of your identity. Guilt is based on an activity. Guilt is based on an activity, something you did. Shame is based on an identity, something Satan wants you to wear. You are. You are this. Guilt said, I did this. Shame says, I am this. And God wants you free of shame. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. God hates shame. God abhors. God hates shame. God hates sin. But listen to this. God hates sin, but God ha also equally hates shame. Why would he hate shame? Because when you sin... Maybe part of that, of you sinning, God, you know, breaking a relationship with God in your sin, God hates sin. But maybe one of the parts that he really hates sin is because that you give an invitation to shame when you sin. And, and the sin that, that people see, shame goes beyond what people see and how you live and how you feel and how you feel about yourself. And how you feel like you're still on a cross and you're still this. Adultery, fornication, abuse, whatever, whatever the vice, whatever, wherever you tripped on life's journey, 
the enemy will immediately try to label this is an alcoholic, this is a drug addict. This he wants to put shame on you. He wants to base shame shame on you. How many times have you ever heard heard that? Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. God says shame off you. Shame off you. Shame off you. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. You're not bound by shame anymore. God has defeated shame at the cross. That's what it said, looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher, who for the joy, did he enjoy the cross? No, he endured the cross, despising the shame. So he was on the cross naked for our shame, for our embarrassment. And just like this man who was running with his clothes, totally exposed, running from Jesus. Let me just say this to you. When you are exposed, when you are vulnerable, Jesus is the one you're supposed to run to, not from. But he's running, and he's hiding, and he lives in fear. My brother John just recently, he was, he was telling me, he got up in the morning and he put his contacts in, and he said, man, the world was whack. He said, I cut everything. He said, I thought the doctor gave me the wrong prescription. Everything was off. Everything was off. He said, my eyes didn't even coordinate together. He said, I did not know what was going on. He said, I popped them out, and actually I had for forgotten to take my other ones out. <laughs> so think of it like this. See, your, your, your contacts are like correcting your vision. And that's called double correction. Like God sent Jesus Christ, and when we sin, listen, there's a correction for our sin, but there's also a forgiveness behind it. But when you are living in shame, you are always trying to correct what was already corrected. And that's why life, you're worse than you were before. You're as miserable as you were when you were lost. You're as empty as you were before. Because the enemy has tricked you into believing you still live under the law, and you are still under sin. Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. Amen. So the man is running through the garden naked. I told you this sermon is going to be fast, okay? He's running through the garment, garden. He's naked. He's wearing a linen, was wearing a, a linen garment, and he runs through. Mark just, just throws that in there. You know, how bizarre, how bizarre, how bizarre. You know, it just threw it. And, and you don't see that. But you study Mark, you'll find out that he says young man twice in the book of Mark. And he talks about a linen garment twice in the book of Mark. You guys, come on up here and get ready to play for me. There's a young man twice in Mark. And there's a linen garment twice in Mark. I'm going to solve this enigma, okay? There's a young man who's run from Jesus. Basically, he's, he's, he's more concerned about self-preservation than he is the Savior. He's running. He's naked. He's exposed. His linen garment is left behind. Mark picks up at the end of Mark, in the last chapter, and Mary, Salome, different ones, they, they come to the tomb. And lo and behold, stone has been rolled away. Moses wrote the book of the law on what? Stones. He didn't write it. God wrote it on stones. Stone. Stone represents the law. The law. What would they do in the Old Testament if somebody sinned? What would they do? What would they pick up? Stone. Stone represents the law. The law killeth, the Spirit gives life. Lo and behold, I get choked up talking about this. The stone has been rolled away. The law has been rolled away. I did it, but I'm not it. John 1, 14 says the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The Old Testament to the New Testament, the Old Covenant covenant to the New Covenant, the New Covenant has been ratified. 
by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The stone has been rolled away. You wouldn't know this except that the stone had been rolled away. But since the stone is rolled away, you can look in. And when you look in, Mark said, there was a young man. We know this is an angel. But he's the only one that's ever identified an angel as a young man. The only one. There's a young man. He only talks about a young man one other time. And I'm not saying this is an angel. I'm just saying the irony of there's a young man in the garden who loses his linen jacket. And then at the resurrection, there's a young man. And there is a garment that's linen. Linen garment that's folded. And he's basically saying, I've got you covered. The Lord Jesus has us covered. Wherever you failed, wherever you came short, wherever you missed the mark, the Lord Jesus has you covered. And somebody this morning needs to know this for your deliverance and for your healing. No more self-loathing. Look here. Those days are over. Quit crying and start fighting the good fight. I refuse to cry over spilt milk over the failures of my past. I refuse. Why? Because the stone has been rolled away. The stone has been rolled away. You know what God said to Joshua in the Old Testament? Probably 1,500 years prior to this. Joshua, the name Joshua, Hebrew. Yeshua, it's the name Jesus in the New Testament, by the way. He is a type. He is a shadow. God says to him, he said, Moses is dead, which represents the law is gone. The law is gone. He said, now I want you to pursue and I want you to take your promise. You've got to take your promise. Quit crying, start fighting. And God said to him, he said to Joshua, he said, this day. Could you believe it? On a Sunday like today that God could say, this day. God said, this day I have rolled away your reproach. I have rolled away your shame. I have rolled away your shame. I just speak that prophetically over this house and online right now. This day, that the Lord has rolled. You didn't have to roll. It's none, none of your effort. You didn't have to push anything. You just had to repent and say, God, here I am. And his garments, he will clothe you with a garment of salvation and with a robe of righteousness. Because you don't stand in your righteousness, you stand in his. What a mighty God we serve. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and worship Him right now. Come on, worship Him in this house. Just worship Him. Symphony's going to sing. And if there's anything in your heart that you just need to say, Lord, forgive me, Lord, cleanse me right now while we're worshiping, just do that.
removing guilt and shame, condemnation, and be broken in the name of Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. New creature. New creature. Lord, we receive that this morning by your grace. By your grace, Lord. Grace wasn't based on me. Grace was placed on me. I didn't deserve it, but you gave it anyway. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Condemnation be broken off of my life in the name of Jesus. I'm going to walk in victory. I'm going to walk in healing. I'm, I'm going to help others walk. I'm going to help others walk. We had those parents up here, all of you, you parents and those beautiful babies. You know, if I could give any parental advice, I would say three words. And then I would say another three words. I'd say first, you know, have a lot of I love you, I love yous. Let those kids know you love them. My grandfather never shared with my father that he loved him. But one day, when my father was around 18 or 19, he and my grandfather visited a church, and my grandfather went to an altar, and he gave his life to Jesus. And at that altar, see, it's exactly what it sounds like, altar, something altar. At that altar, he looked at my dad, and he said, I love you. First time he ever heard it was at an altar. Is that beautiful or what? Was at an altar. So it will change things. I love you. But I'll give you another one. And to be honestly transparent is to say I was wrong. Because a lot of kids grow up in homes where the mom or the dad, and eventually you reach an age where you know they're not always right. Come on, guys. They're not always right. But sometimes just saying I was wrong opens up the door for somebody else to say I don't have to live under a mandate of perfection. It's a protecting environment. To say I can mess up, but God's better. My parents are better. Even when I was wrong, my parents still love me. They're still going to keep me and take me. And they're not through with me. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. The Bible said, when we were faithless. Why do you think he says that? When we were faithless, yet. Though Abram, you handsome young man, if you'd have crossed the street with your, your dad, he saw me. He just put his head down and shot. If you were to cross the street with your dad and you see something, you want to run out, your dad's not going to let you go. Not six foot three Brian. He's not going to let him go. He's not going to let him go. You might let go of Brian's hand. Brian's not going to let Abram go. God's not going to let you go. He's a better father than you've ever seen. He's a better father than we've ever experienced. Amen. You being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly father give to you? He's better. He's better. You have nothing to compare him to. He is God. That's what the word holy means. It means set apart all alone. He's in a category all alone. Thank God for godly fathers, godly men. Know the way, show the way, go the way. Thank God for those people and mothers that guide and direct and nurture. But we still don't compare. He's a good, he's a good, good father. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Tell somebody, yes, he is. Lord, we just thank you this day. You are so faithful. You are so good to us. And we praise you, Lord God. No matter our failure, our failure isn't final because you're fighting for us. And we love you and we praise you, Lord. As long as the tomb is empty, anything is possible. We praise you. We worship you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have communion over here to your left. If you like special prayer, come down here. Somebody will meet you and pray with you, and you'll get victory. God bless you. I love you. Thank you. All you Thank Thanks you so for much for tuning us. in today. Again, if you made a decision for Christ today or you recommitted your life to Christ, 
fill out an info form at fopchurch.net slash info form so that we can celebrate with you and be praying for you. Just a reminder that you can give your tithes and offering online at fopchurch.net slash give on our FOP Church app under giving. You can text the amount you'd like to give to 937-400-1779 or you can mail a check made out to FOP Church to P.O. Box 381 Clarksville, Ohio, 45113. Thanks for joining us and have an awesome week.